everyone, welcome back to some more Stardew Valley. If you're excited to see some more of this amazing addictive game for more tips and tricks then be sure to hit that like button and let me know that you guys want to see more of this. I freaking love this game and I love making videos for you to hopefully help you guys out. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. And today I will be showing you guys an advanced guide full of tips and tricks. Obviously I've done the beginner's guide and the intermediate guide so if you guys want to go and check them out if you haven't already. But today is the advanced guide. This guide will be based towards reaching the end game. Maybe you're in your like 5th, 6th year, maybe even further. But these tips will help you out and give you some ideas what to do at this stage in the game. So firstly I will talk about finishing the community centre. Now I know you can complete this within 2 years if you try super hard and most of you probably already have. But at the start of this game and towards the mid game you don't really concentrate much on the community centre because money's short and you don't have much time. But at this stage in the game towards the end you should have completed it by now and have unlocked all the bundles from it. It took me 4-5 to five years to complete, that's ages I know but I was waiting on a few items that I needed such as the rabbit's foot and some certain fish that only can be caught or found in certain seasons depending on the weather and it took so long to find. I didn't use the internet for LP either so that's probably why it did take me so long but there is guides on the wiki to help find certain items but I won't get into that on this video. But the day after you finish your last bundle, entering the town square at any time will spring an event and this will shut down Jojo for good. Also, once all the community centre bundles are completed, Pia's general store will be open all days of the week. Oh yes! At this stage of the game you should start to try and complete the museum too. Finding new artefacts for Gunther is always fun for them rewards, but it can be frustrating and hard work. There are a total of 53 minerals and 42 artefacts that can be donated to Gunther's museum. These can be found by digging deep and fighting enemies in the mines. The treasure chests from fishing. and also around town from the worms. It is random percent chances to find all of these, so just get searching. But once finally completed and you have donated all 95 items to Gunther, he will give you a star drop reward, which increases stamina, and also you will get an in-game achievement. Another thing to concentrate on towards end game is the Skull Cavern Mine. Located in the desert which requires the school key to gain access. There is an infinite number of floors, it goes on forever. Who knows what the end is? What's the furthest you've reached? Drop it in the comments. But unlike the normal mines, there is no elevator to save progress. Each visit must start a game from the first floor. If you run out of health or blackout, you will wake up sometime later the same day in Harvey's clinic, getting a fee of 1000 gold. And some valuable items may also be lost. Every 10 floors the chance to find iridium ore increases significantly. The monsters in the cavern also have a chance to drop ore and iridium bars. It can be a good idea to bring the lava katana or the galaxy sword as enemies are a lot stronger. Exploring the cavern on a lucky day will increase the odds of finding loot and ladders. Since the frequency of iridium ore increases for every 10 floors, Rapid descent is often more efficient for acquiring ore than for exploration. With a full bag of stone and bombs it's possible to get to floor 300 plus just by crafting stairs and make sure to take lots of food for energy so you can progress so much coming out with tons of iridium and valuable items. Now another simple tip for this stage, you most likely have tons of money lying around and you're one rich ass farmer. It's probably best to buy items and goods needed instead of foraging or gathering for them. Do you need iron ore or coal? Just buy it from Clint. Do you need wood or stone? Just buy it from Robin. It's so easy and simple, can save you a lot of time, but obviously if you have the money of course. 
Another tip, don't worry about your animals. They are pointless at this stage of the game, they're a waste of time and energy and they don't make you much money at all. The produce they give you is great, but they can never die. If you fail to feed them or fail to care for them, your worst case scenario is that they produce nothing or you may have a drop in the quality of the product. Just let them do their thing because unattending them won't kill them. As long as you have hay in your silos for your auto feeders, they'll be fine. They don't need your love anymore, they've had it for years. A great thing to do at this stage of the game is redesign your farm. You've got lots of money and time, just create the farm of your dreams. Use a full year to do this. Move things around and decorate to how you like. Make it look pretty or cool. But also, try and redesign it to be more practical. Make it easier to access and produce items. Think about efficiency, let the farm do the work instead of the farm working you. Because we all know at the start of the game, we plonked kegs and chests everywhere on the farm, not worrying about the looks. And we left it looking like this for years because it was just easier to do so. Well now is the time to create that perfect farm. Once you have reached end game, there is two new quests available from the wizard. These will unlock two new map locations. One quest is called Dark Talisman, where the wizard will ask you to retrieve the magic ink from his ex-wife's house, but to gain access you'll need a Dark Talisman. To get this, you enter the sewer and ask Krobus about the Dark Talisman. Once spoken to Krobus, he will gain entrance to the mutant bug lair. You then go ahead to retrieve the Dark Talisman. Return to the railroad area and place the dark talisman on the artifact block in the cave. The other quest is called Goblin Problem. There is a goblin blocking the path to the witch's hut. Speak to the witch's henchman in the witch's swamp and give him a void mayonnaise to gain entrance to the witch's hut. Find the magic ink and return it to the wizard. After retrieving the wizard's magic ink, it will make some unique buildings available for sale. These buildings will be conjured by him, requiring no build time. They are all very expensive and intended to be better quality of life for end game players. The buildings that will be available for sale are the Earth Obelisk, which warps you to the mountains. This costs 1 million gold, 10 Iridium Bars and 10 Earth Crystals, so it's very expensive. And the second one is the Water Obelisk. This warps you to the beach anytime. It requires 1 million gold, 5 Iridium Bars, 10 Clams and 10 uh, Corals. Also available is the Junimo Hut, which Junimos will harvest crops around the hut for you. This costs 20,000 gold, 200 stone, 9 star fruit and 100 fiber. And the biggest and most expensive item in the game to purchase is the gold clock. This costs 10 million gold. This will prevent debris and weeds and junk from appearing on your farm and it also keeps fences from decaying. So it is worth doing these two quests to get these amazing items from the wizard's tower. They are very expensive to buy but this is why it's an advanced guide because they are end game requirements. Also, once unlocked the Witcher's Hut, there will be three shrines available to use. The Dark Shrine of Memory, the Dark Shrine of Selfishness and the Dark Shrine of Night Terrors. The Shrine of Memory costs 30,000 to use and once you use this shrine, this will erase a divorced spouse's memory, making it seem like you've never been married. So you will be divorced and your hearts will go back down to zero, they'll never even know you. If you want to get rid of someone, you can pay 30,000 and forget them for good. And also, there is the Shrine of Selfishness, which allows you to turn your children into duffs, which is permanent removal. You can get rid of children whenever you like, all you need is one prismatic shard. And the last shrine, the Knight of Terrors, this allows you to toggle having monsters spawn on your farm. It works for all farm maps including, including the wilderness. All you need is a strange bun. So once you put a strange bun into that shrine, monsters will either reappear or disappear from your farm depending which farm layout you are on. 
So guys, that brings us to the end of today's video. This has been my advanced guide to help you guys out who are towards the end game of Stardew Valley. Hopefully this video helped you out. If these tips and tricks and this guide seem to have helped you out and you've got some ideas from it, please hit that like button, show me the support. If you want to see more Stardew Valley videos, let me know in the comments below. I've got a lot more ideas to come. If you are new around here and you've come across my channel, don't forget to subscribe to see more Stardew Valley. I'm gaining a lot of subscribers lately. You guys are going absolutely crazy for these Stardew Valley videos. So thank you so much. Welcome to all the new people. But for now, guys, I'm going to leave this one here. And I will see you again, hopefully, on the next video. Bye-bye.